In this video, I will be providing you with a few different types of construction methods that can be used to attach the upper section of a stairway, stair stringers to a ledger or a floor framing system, even a landing or a platform. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to point out is that you're going to come across projects where the architect's measurements aren't perfect. They could be off by a little bit. And when I say a little bit, I have had these measurements off by, um, you know, a couple of inches before. Probably not going to get past that. Not not saying you can't have an architect who drew a measurement in that uh, hooked over a wall and thought they were butting up against it. But with these computer generated programs, that's not going to happen as much as it used to. So here we have a stairway that is 38 inches wide, 38 inches wide. The landing should be 38 inches by 38 inches. Not uncommon to see a stairway that encroaches into this area or is set back a little further um, from the um, from the 38 inches or trying to trying to have everything line up. So here we can see if I go back the front of the riser lines up with the outside of the um, stairway below. To solve some of these problems, and if you don't want to uh, do uh, use the methods, a little too complicated for you, all you need to do is move the stairway back if you have a, a situation like this, and you can do it. You're not going to want to move it forward if you're going to be creating a problem for the minimum um, recommended uh, distance for a stairway landing and uh, even the width of a stairway. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've came to a project where this wall was framed in, into a certain spot and they built the stairs off of that and the stairway is encroaching one whole step into the landing and the landing was already at the minimum measurement and that's not going to make your local building inspector happy. So let's go ahead and get started with our first method, which would be a standard construction method. Stair stringers attaching to a ledger and then to the floor framing and then a wall here. So we're going to go ahead and move the wall back two inches to um, give you an idea of how to fix something like this. So if this happened to me, I would just simply make the top section of the stringers two inches longer. Use the ledger and I'm still going to get a nice connection. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill this area in with a inch and a half thick piece of our uh, framing lumber and maybe a half inch or three eighths inch piece of plywood. And I, and I say this, you're probably thinking, now wait a minute, why would you use a piece that's going to be an eighth of an inch smaller? It's not uncommon to nail a couple of pieces uh, like this together, a two by six, let's say, and a piece of half inch plywood or half inch OSB and end up with two and an eighth inches or um, even something a little bit larger. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to fix something like this. Now in the next example, I moved the wall back six more inches. See the floor framing sitting on top of the wall and extended the stringer. And I'm just kind of throwing this example out because this is something where I don't think you're going to get enough nailing here. Not suggesting this won't work. I've seen it done before, but uh, there are a few other methods that you might want to consider. Like this one here where we just simply made the stringer a little longer. If you remember in our first example, it stopped about here. In the next one, we added two inches to it, stopping it about here. And in this example, we've just simply added this much to the stringer to make everything work out. And this is another common construction method to where you're going to have the floor joist um, line up with the top of the um, stringer where all the sheathing will work out perfectly. And in our next example, you can see we moved the wall back a little further. And this method here will work in most cases if this wall was located over here, because we can always use this right here as our supporting rim joist or our structural support to support the 
floor joists. So even if we didn't have a wall here, but we could somehow put a doubler in here. And you'll see that here in a second. I just have a single, single rim there but you'll see it here in a second what I'm talking about. Give you an idea of the floor framing. The joists are sitting on top of the wall here, cantilevering over and then connecting to the rim here. You can see it right here. Now we just have a singular. I'm going to show you what it looks like with a double supporting joist in here. But not too difficult. The weight of all of this is going to be supported by the floor joist cantilever and the rim that's sitting on top of both of the walls here. You have the rim sitting on top of this wall and on top of this one. And of course here's what it would look like with the doubler sitting on top of both walls. And this brings us to the end of the video. I've covered about every possibility for something like this. Like I said, if this wall was to go back to here, even to here, and you could somehow support it with a doubler sitting on top of a couple of load-bearing walls, you're not going to have a problem.